Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome to Midday with LaJean and Valora. We're excited to be back with you guys on this beautiful Monday afternoon here in sunny, 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 sunny Tampa, Florida. We are truly, truly blessed to be in such a beautiful state. And so we are, um, I tell you, God is so amazing. We've got people already coming in for the Global Mega Suddenly Conference. Yes, yes, yes. We are excited. It starts this Thursday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. My husband... Who's preaching? <laughs> Who's preaching this, this Thursday at 10 o'clock? Well, my husband has me speaking um, on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, opens at 10 o'clock, and um, it's, I tell you, Because everything starts with prayer. <laughs> everything starts with intercession. We don't start with yes. intercession and prayer, yes. we're going to be in trouble. Yes. And so that's why you are, you're, because you are a master at intercession and prayer. Okay, yes, sir, you are. I hear you. You sure I are. I hear you. I hear you, but we, again, are excited. Thank you all so much for praying with us. We were on the prayer line this morning, and we began to really pray for the conference, for all of the speakers, the participants, um, everything. We began to pray even for those that are traveling um, by whatever means, um, you know, for a safe arrival. And, uh, again, thank you all so very much for standing in with us. We, we certainly appreciate that um, so very much. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, I am, uh, I'm really believing that we're in a season for many of us where um, people are, people are on, on like in two, two different sides of the coin. Some people are in a place where they're like, you know, they're excited because of what God is doing. And then some people are in a place where they're challenged with the fact that God may not necessarily have potentially done what they thought that he was going to do by the time that they thought he was going to do it. And uh, I find that uh, I, as I was reading in um, the book Sudden Breakthrough, I'm going to read a little bit of one of the chapters, chapter 5. It says, Suddenly God is remembering you. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Genesis 30 and 22. It says, um, Many people were encouraged, well, are encouraged, previously struggled with feeling alone or feeling forgotten. Life has a tendency to take us through storms, which leave us feeling alone and isolated. We can even feel as if though God has forgotten us. Nothing could be farther from the truth. When we look in scripture, we find many passages where God remembers his people. This chapter is specifically dedicated to those who feel like you have been in your situation so long and it feels like no one is there for you. Family has forsaken you, children, husbands, or wives. Your battle with depression and secretly had thoughts of ending it all. We want you to know that God has not forgotten you and he is about to remember you and turn your situation around. God is suddenly remembering you, just as God suddenly remembered Hannah, he will remember you, just as he remembered Rachel, he will remember you, as he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, he will remember you, God, I mean, get ready to, to flourish, prepare to be victoriously, uh, victorious like you have never been before, it's your suddenly season, and God is remembering you suddenly, let's look at how God remembered Hannah, Rachel, Noah, and Israel, we begin to look at those texts of scripture, but I wanted to encourage somebody today that God is literally getting ready to remember his promises. Now, you know, the, the challenging thing about that is that sometimes uh, we can feel like, you know, or, or there, there are those theologians who would say, well, does God, uh, does God actually forget people? No, God doesn't forget people. God has, uh, you, you know, God has all the knowledge. He has all the wisdom, but it's almost like a metaphor or a play on words or a play on speech right. where the scripture would say, and God remembered Rachel or, and God remembered this person. And so oftentimes you will, you will see the scriptures say that, but again, it's not that God uh, ever forgets anything. God has all knowledge. We know that the scripture says he is omnipotent. He is all powerful. He's omniscient. He has all knowledge. He is all, you know, and then he is omnipresent. He is everywhere all at the same time. So we know that God doesn't, uh, doesn't forget things. But when we look at this word, remember, it means that there is a point in time where God remembers or God goes back to his word and he thinks back on the word and the promises that he gave you and he thinks back on uh, your situation and your circumstance and he literally causes his the promise that he made at one point in your life to come in and intersect with the time of your life now 
and literally causes those things to intersect in such a way that they're catapulted you, they catapult you into your future. And so I'm really, really excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about what God wants to do in your future. Uh, I really, really believe that this is a season where God is literally getting ready to do some amazing things in the lives of his people. And there are many of you who are here who, who just like, uh, you know, Rachel or, or just like Noah was in Genesis 8 and 1. It says, and God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was, uh, that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water a sway. Water is sometimes symbolic of trouble. It's sometimes symbolic of of, of challenges, symbolic of problems. And so, so there was water that was sent upon the earth. Even sometimes water sent, uh, sent upon the earth to, 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 to li literally cleanse the earth. My wife talks about how the water and the wind sometimes would come to cleanse things. And that's what happened. The earth was cleansed in Noah's situation. And then there was a certain period of time when, the, when God then begins to literally shift that situation, turn it around for them. They had been sitting on the ark for a long period of time. And so here they are. They they, they may have felt as if though God had forgotten them, that God had forsaken them. But one thing we know about God, he does not forget us, he does not forsake us. Right. And there comes a point in time when he remembers you. And I yes. prophesy today that God is literally getting ready to remember some of you. That some of you have been in your situation, you felt as if though everybody's walked away, you felt as if though it were getting worse instead of getting better. You thought that the challenges were coming and they were coming at you like left and right. <laughs> you didn't know which way you were coming from. Yes. But I know a God who is able to look down in your situation and and see the waters that have troubled you and see the challenges that have come against you and all of a sudden he has an ability to cause a wind to literally come and blow everything that's come against you every challenge every storm he's come to blow those things away and cause you to receive the promises and the inheritance come on and the legacy and, yes. the, and the things that he has promised you he's going to begin to release those things to you like never before and so that's our declaration today God is remembering you he's remembering every promise he's remembering this is why Paul told Timothy he said, you have to wage a good warfare for your prophetic yes. promises. Because sometimes the things that you believe in God for, I made this statement yesterday in my message. I said that there were times in our, in our, in our ministry, there were times in our life, and I said... Anything, any vision that God has given you, you got to be prepared to die for it. Yes. Come on, the early apostles were ready to die for what they believed in. Absolutely. The early prophets Absolutely. were ready to die for what they believed yes. in. Let's go a little further because sometimes we get things out of context. Jesus was ready to die for what he believed in. He believed in you and he believed in me and he believed in her. And yes. so as a result of him believing in us, he literally died for what he believed. He Absolutely. put his life on the stake. Yes. And sometimes we have people that are in our situation. Let me tell you something. One of the other things that I, I've been working on. I've been working on this uh, this message series that we're getting ready to do for our local church, Contagious Churches, and I've been working on this thing on covenant. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that there are certain tests that you have to go through in order to fully understand covenant. Yes. Some of us have had people on our team who did not understand the fullness of covenant and were not willing to die for what they believed in. Jesus. And so they weren't willing to die for the relationship. They weren't willing to die. Listen, when I, told, when I looked at the scenario between uh, uh, David and Jonathan, Jonathan Jonathan was willing to die. He he had made a covenant with David, and as a result of that covenant, guess what? He was not taking his word back. His father Saul got upset with him one day and threw the javelin at him. He was literally re ready to kill him, but Jonathan said, I will not take my word back. And likewise, later on, Mephibosheth became yes. the, the heir and, and the recipient of a promise that Jonathan and David had made. And so God is the same way. When he makes a promise with you, he is the author of covenant. He is the he is the progenitor of covenant. He is the one who created the word covenant and he understands covenant. We talk about sometimes the difference between the unilateral and the bilateral covenant. Right. The unilateral covenant means that God has, has said that he's going to do something and listen, there's nothing you have to do. And then there are unilateral covenants where you have a part to play and God has a part to play. Mm -hmm. But I've come to tell you today that God, when he gave you his word, his word cannot return void concerning yes. you. He's watching over his word concerning you and he is remembering his word that he gave you. That's our declaration today. We're not taking it back. What do you think about that? I want to, I want to give you a few more scripture because it's important that we give you scripture. And uh, and this is on page 40, 39 and page 40 of, of the new book, Sudden Breakthrough, for those of you who have not necessarily seen it. But I'm telling you, this, this book blessed my life because it made me go back to the promises that yes. God made me. I took my wife Jesus. back to Fort Benning, Georgia uh, on last month and I, was, I took her and I showed her this house that I used to live in on 505 Gain Circle on Main Post 
in Fort Benning, Georgia. It was upon that porch that one day God looked at me and God, and God spoke to me. I, I could hear it audibly. I remember going in that door that day and I, I, it brings back an, a, a power in my spirit, a strength in my, in my resolve. It brings Jesus. back an anointing upon me when I think about the words that God spoke to me. God said, you're going to be a millionaire. He said, millions of dollars are coming into your hand. At that time, I was still in the military. I didn't have millions. I didn't even have ideas or creativity that produced millions. But I've come to tell you today that God has given me multi-million dollar ideas and not only multi-million dollar ideas for me, but he has caused me yes. to give multi-million dollar ideas to those who are close to me and those who yes. hang around. And those. And listen, I want to pray for, stir, uh, for God to stir the ideas, the idea that you forgot about. Listen, you need to go back and remember some things. Jesus. God is remembering some things, but you need to go back Absolutely. and remember some things yes. that God promised you. He yes. promised you that he was going to bless you. He promised you he was going to bless your children. He promised you he was going to bless your family. And so you've got to go back and remember what God promised you because the God that we yes. serve is the God of covenant. He is the God of memory. He is the God who will not forget yes. what he told you. He will not. He will watch over his word to perform it. He looks at his word. He told Jeremiah, I'm watching over my word to perform it. And so God is literally watching yes. his word. He is watching his word watch operate it. through the earth and he is commanded. Jesus. His word is like a good soldier. Come on, I was in the military for 13 years. I understood my general orders. I understood that I could not quit my assignment until I had completed it. It's yes. just how it works. It's illegal for a soldier to not to come back with the excuse, oh, I couldn't get it done. I gave my best. I tried my all. No, our, our only best was our life. Are you listening to me? Yes. When you go to complete an assignment, the only excuse you can come back with is that you're in a, and I know this sounds deep for some people, but the only excuse that a soldier, that a real soldier comes back with is either the mission accomplished or his body in a casket. Are you listening to me? Jesus. And so that's the kind of, that's the kind of mental resolve. When you when you burn the bridge that lets you have an excuse, you, you begin to accomplish things. Some, some, some of us have, have too many excuses to get things accomplished. Are you listening to me? But I want you to, I want to talk to you about a God who gives no excuses. Amen. He gives no exceptions. When he gives you his word, he brings it to pass and literally he says that heaven and earth will pass away. One Not one jot or tittle of his word will, will, will not return, will not be accomplished and heaven and earth yes. will pass away before he allows one jot or tittle of his word not to come to pass. Listen, I'm telling you, the God that we serve is a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us. Yes. I'd love for you to share this, bro. Just hit the share button right My there God. because I believe that yes. by the time we're done, somebody's yes. faith is going to arise. Come somebody's going to be a comp. They're going to rise. You're going to go to the next level and you're going to believe God for your sudden breakthrough. We're decreeing it. We're declaring it and we're saying that God is getting ready to remember you like never before. Come on. What do you want? What's the Lord telling you on that? You know, I, I tell you, I've been blessed already by the word of God and just being able to go back because many times we sometimes don't even have, we, we don't feel as though God can't do it. It's just sometimes his timing and waiting on the timing of God. But one of the things that we all know about God is that his timing is perfect. Even when it seems like we're out of time, it seems like it's been delayed. It seems like it's been denied. It seems like you're not ready for it. You know, you like, God, I, I, I'm not ready because this, that, and the other but God has a specific time that he is, he is it, it is time release, right? So we have to be able to get into that place that we say, God, I trust you and I thank you. When God promised you something, you don't have to keep asking him for what he said belongs to you, amen? And so we have to begin to thank him uh, for what he has given to us and what his promises are, even in his word, begin to thank God. We don't have to ask God for help if we know he's already our present help in the very time of trouble, that he's our strength and he's certain our refuge. Amen. And so when everything, and he's our redeemer, and he's our redeemer, he came to redeem you. So there are certain things we don't necessarily have to ask God for when we know who he already is, when he know he is our healer. And so we take the word that God has given unto us and we send forth the word to that situation. The word of God says that he has sent his word to us and he has healed us in the name of Jesus. So we, we receive the healing. We take hold of the word of the Logos word that it will become rhema in our our life for the manifestation of God's word to come to pass. And so we we, we are almost like, and I, I remember us talking about this before, but we are almost like God's secretary. We say, God, you have an appointment. You have an appointment with my life. You have an appointment with my family. You have an appointment with my son and my daughter because God, you promised me. I dedicated them back to you and you promised me that they will serve you and they will live for you and they will be, they will prosper and be in good health in the name of Jesus. So you remember 
you, as you remember, you go back and you say, God, this is what you said. This is what you wrote in your word. And I stand on your word. God, I will not waver. I will not look to the left nor to the right because I know you are a covenant God. I know that you are a faithful God. I know that you cannot lie. I know because your word has gone forth. It will not return back to you empty. And so when God sends the word on an assignment, the mission is always accomplished. That's it. Listen, God then remembers Rachel, page 40. And God Jesus. remembered Rachel and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Mm. For years, she had watched not only uh, her assistant have babies, she had watched other, other people have children. She had watched, uh, you, you know, she had watched, you know, her sister have babies. She had watched Leah. And so she, all through all these processes, everybody else had had children. And here she was barren. Yeah. And so you, you, you know, the, uh, the modern day connotation for this is you watched everybody else be blessed. You ever, you watched everybody <laughs> else get there My suddenly. God. You watch everybody else walk in the fulfillment of the promises of God for their life. And here you are barren. You're not able to really produce what you know you're able to produce. You know there's greater. You know there's more. You know My there's God. greater significance. Jesus. You know that there is something about you that's supposed to produce something. You don't even feel <laughs> as if though you are who you are supposed My to be God. because you're not producing what you're supposed to produce. Yes. But I've come to tell you today that the God that we serve is remembering you. That the anointing of God is being loosed in this on this scope and on this Facebook Live and on this YouTube video. And for those who are watching later, the presence of God, the anointing of God is literally entering into your spiritual womb as literally produced to cause you Jesus. to bring forth that which was inside Jesus. of you, the purpose that's inside of you, the destiny, the anointing Jesus. that's on the inside of you, it's coming forth. Everything that God promised you is about to come to pass. Every demonic system and every cycle and every enemy of hell, I mean, of, of your life, amen, and every enemy from hell that's come against you, that's tried to stop you, that's trying to hold you up, that's trying to hinder you, that's, trying, that's lied on you, that's, that's, that's come against you in any way that they could come against you. We declare today that the cycle and the system is broken oh by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus. That no weapon that's formed against your promise, that's no weapon formed against your womb, that's one woman formed, no weapon formed against your destiny. That everything that God said he's going to do, he's getting ready to remember you. And like Rachel, he's getting ready to open up your womb. Come on, just like the woman of God, just like Noah, he's getting ready to remember you and he's getting ready to cause the wind of God to literally blow everything Jesus. away that's causing you to not fulfill your destiny. I'm looking at the scriptures of God and I'm looking through these scriptures and I'm seeing where God remembered his people. Let's go to page 41. It came to pass of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage and God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob. Jesus. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. I remember one time in my life when and I was so, in a... As, I don't want to cut you off, but but you see, God is a generational God. Mm -hmm. He's not just the God of one of one generation, but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the blessing of the Lord is not just going to stop with you, but it's gonna it's gonna continue. A Amen. It's gonna continue through other generations. So I, I look back on my life, and I look back at my at something my grandmother had prayed. And so my grandmother had had relationship and covenant with God even before I was born. And I remember I got I got myself into a situation. The enemy came and tried to literally take my life away. Those of you last year at the Atlanta suddenly you heard my testimony. And so when here I am in this situation, my grandmother said, "Listen, God, I need you to hear me, and I need you to remember the promise that you yes. made with me." And so yes. when, when in this situation, God hears Israel, and He remembers the promise that He made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. And so so you can be in a situation and God will literally hear the cries. Mm. Come on, you're in the situation yes. and he'll hear the My cries God. of your ancestors who prayed Jesus. and who made covenant with him. And some of us are the benefactors of prayers and covenants and yes. relationship. Come on, that your mother had with God, that your father had with God, that your grandfather, that your grandmother, that your great grandfather, your great grandmother, that they, you know, because we always talk about generational cursings, but I want to talk about generational blessings. Yes. That God can literally remember the covenant that he made with your ancestors and with those who went before you and when God remembers what, what he told them. He remembers the promises. He remembers the things. He remembers their lifestyle. You may have yes. been messed up and you may have done some things wrong but God says I'm going to remember the things that your grandmother and your grandfather mm. prayed. And as a result, I'm going to release, 
amen, my blessings and my favor upon you. Listen, the scope is entitled God is remembering you and he's going to do it suddenly. So we believe that this is a season where God is doing yes. these things straightway, suddenly, immediately, without notice. Yes. I'm telling you, I'm believing God. And you know, and, and, and let me say this, this is another thought upon about my sound message. Come on. And it's, and their cry came up before God by reason of the bond. So, so there is a, there is a literal sound yes. of, 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 of importunity. There's a sound of crying out to God that literally gets God's attention and then he suddenly moves. Are you My listening God, to me? Yes. And we talked about the other day how sometimes we got to release a sound. There is a sound. There is a sound. There is a sound that we can release. There is an anointed sound that when we cry that sound that we can hear. Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, you know, another thing is I've learned how to listen to sounds. Mm -hmm. A mother knows how to listen to the sound of her child. Are you yes. listening? And so a mother knows her child's cry and she, she knows whether now fathers, we don't always necessarily if we don't always listen, not all the time, amen, but, 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 but as time goes on, we can probably learn it, but a mama automatically knows if the child is hungry, if the child is, if the child is wet, he understands distress. if the child is in distress, the mother understands all yes. of those different types of yes. cries, and so God operates the same way. Yes. He understands when your cry is just a cry of, of complaining, it's a cry of whining, it's a cry of faith, it's a cry of desperation, it's a cry of worship, it's a cry of praise, God hears, he knows your voice. Yes. And listen, he understands just where you're at. And so there are times when we begin to cry out to God. I know for me, there, there were times, now we talk about catalysts for our suddenly season. There are times when I get to a place where God, I need you to produce breakthrough for me, Lord. And so what I'll do is I'll go and get on my face before the Lord. Jesus. I'll begin to pray before the Lord. I'll begin to fast before the Lord. Mm. I'll begin to get everything. Apostle John talked about it this morning. He talked about the good land. I'll get everything out of my land that's stopping my blessing and my breakthrough. Yeah. And when I get everything out of the land, my cry of holiness begins to ascend into the heavenly realm. Yes. And God literally causes things to begin to manifest. Listen, God is here. I was sitting there this morning. And, um, and Agape, our puppy, he's around here somewhere. He's not too far. Uh, he may be in the office. And so he, here it is. He's crying. And so I'm, I'm hearing him. So when somebody go, comes into the house, he automatically thinks that somebody is coming to see him. And so what happens is he starts to, if he's in, in the room, he'll start to whine. He'll start to cry. Mm, mm, mm. And so I automatically know that that's his little cry and whine saying, I want to get out. Right. And so God, if I can know the sound of my puppy, I know that God knows my sound and my cry yes. when I cry out to him. He is yes. more attentive Jesus. than I am to, to uh, you know, to my puppy and a mother is to his child. God hears your cry. And so I'm telling you today that God. you got to release the Jesus. sound to God. Whether Jesus. your sound is a sound of holiness, whether your sound is a sound of, of cry of desperation, whether your sound is a sound of praise, of adoration, of exaltation under God. But I'm telling you today is the day if I were you, I would release my sound. And when I release my sound, I believe that God is literally going to hear me. Woo! Sometimes my sound for me is a quiet sound yes. to get before God. Oh God. Shut everybody down. Don't text me. Don't call me. Don't speak to me. Yes. Don't cook nothing around me. I don't want to hear it. I don't care what's going on. I need to talk to my father. I, I was listening to this, this song yesterday and I'm going to leave it alone. There was a song yesterday and, and most of y'all, um, most of y'all have heard this old song. Now some people don't like, you know, you don't like the old songs, you don't like the old worship songs, but I love some of the old songs. There was a song that I was listening to yesterday, and this lady, uh, you know, it, it really blessed me, and, and, and so the, the songwriter, I don't know who writes, some of you may even know the know the songwriter, but he was talking about a family that was traveling, and and and, and the, the, the husband, I guess, got sick, and so the, the, the everybody, they, they, they got, they, they were traveling somewhere in Mississippi, somewhere like that, in, in the South, and so they went, they stopped by this house, and when they stopped on the side of the road, something was wrong with it, and so the, they, they all went in the house. Well, mother, the, the grandmother was still sitting in the, was still sitting in the car, and so they went in the house, they tried to call the doctor, something happened, they couldn't get the doctor, as they were sitting in there, and all of a sudden, grandmother came in the house, and she said, listen, she said, uh, she said, she said, uh, I, I I need a closet. And so they said, well, if you need the phone, you can, uh, you know, you can use the phone. She said, no, 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 I don't need a phone. I need a closet. Yes. And some of us need a closet. So she when she went in her closet, she said, hey, sing the old song. Come on, right? Come on in the room. Yes. Come on. I said, my God, I yes. love that song because it reminded me that we need to remember to take our issues to God uh -huh. instead of always taking them to people. Nowadays, we take our problems and our issues to social media. We take our problems to our best friend. This generation knows nothing 
nothing about taking our issues to a God who has the ability to shut the mouth of the lion, who has Jesus. the ability to rescue you from the lion's den, to rescue you from the fiery furnace, to rescue you from the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. These are, this is what we've got to get back to. We've got to get back to a place where we take our issues back to God and we cry out to God and we get quiet before him and you literally tell everybody around you, please don't talk around me. I'm talking to God. Shut the door. Lock the door. Turn your plate down. Turn the social media yes. off. Turn the turn all that other stuff. Because God can do more for you in 24 hours of spending time with him than you can talking to your best friend. Jesus. Talking to your social media account. I'm telling you all the posting and all the graphics and everything else I've done. Nothing can do for me what speaking to God and letting God hear the sound of my voice. Yes. It will literally cause things to happen. I've seen it happen yes. before. Yes. I've seen God move. Yes. And I trust God to move. Are you listening yes. to me? And so for those of you listen, uh, you know, I, I just I want you to I want you to get into that place because God is getting ready to remember you. Jesus. I want you to get into your birthing position. I want you to get into the position Jesus. where you're seeing God begin to move. And listen to me, listen to me if you hear nothing else I say today. Everybody around you who does not understand what you where you need to get to with God, oh God. in order to get your breakthrough, if your Jesus. wife don't understand, if your husband don't understand, if your co-workers don't understand, yes. if your employees don't understand, yes. if your sons and daughters don't understand, if your father and mother don't understand, if your puppy don't understand, mm -hmm. you got to get to a place where you count the presence of God oh and God. getting into that place with him Jesus. more than anything else yes. because I'm telling you, you God Jesus. can do more for you if you just get in his presence and spend time with him to remember you and his promises that he had for you. Get to that place. I'm telling you, I, I don't know who this is for, but I'm telling you, you've spent more time and more energy and more money trying to do things your way, but God is saying, talk to me about it. Get with me about it. If you got a problem, talk to God. If you got joy, talk to God. If you need an answer or a solution, talk to God about it. Yes. Listen, share something. Share this with somebody because somebody needs to hear this. Somebody Jesus. has been relying on other people, but God literally wants wants to remember them and remember them suddenly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things too is so important, even this time that you, of this time of waiting, of this time that God is releasing something, it's very, it's very um, important that we really watch the things that come out of our mouth because we ourselves can be holding up what God wants to release based on what we speak forth, based on what we say um, over the situation. So begin to come into alignment with the word of God and what God has said. If God said it, then you speak just what God says. If God didn't say it, don't, you don't speak it. Amen. So declare the word of the Lord and begin to guard your mouth, begin to guard your heart because out of your heart flows the issues of life. And so we want to stay in that place of covenant. We want to stay in that place where we can hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. And so in order to hear the voice of God, you got to know where he is. Amen. You got to pursue him. You got to, you got to be desperate for him. There, there has to be a hunger and a thirst for him and his righteousness so that you can be filled in the name of Jesus, in the presence of God, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And we're looking for joy in, in, in different places. We're looking for joy through, through material means, but no, it's in the presence of God that you will find fullness of joy. Let, let, let me read this last one on page 43. God remembers Hannah. Mm -hmm. And they rose up early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to the house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bore a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. 1 Samuel 1, 19-20. On page 44 it says, Hannah represents those who, like Rachel, who feel barren, stagnant, and unfruitful in life. Her wound is locked up, and it appears to her, just like many of the others, that God is not hearing their cry for help. Hannah's adversary was in her own home, and she was mocking her. Penina had been able to conceive, and as a result, she had used it as a means of taunting Hannah. Hannah must have felt abandoned and unappreciated. Although her husband attempted to comfort her as a woman, she felt as if though she was not fulfilling her purpose uh, in, in, in life. One day, she and her husband, Elkanah, went to the temple to worship. 
Her worship was so intense that she touched the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And as a result, God remembered her and opened her womb. Again, here was a barren woman who was carrying a very important package. Hannah, Hannah birthed a young man by the name of Samuel. Samuel was the first judge and prophet of Israel. He was the one who ordained and consecrated the first two kings of Israel. He was one. He was the one who, who restored pure and true worship in Israel. He was also the one who established the first school of the prophets. Samuel was no ordinary child. And I'm telling you, for some of you, that's why it's been so long. That's why it's been so traumatic. That's why it's been so challenging. But, but listen, God is still getting ready to remember you. The reason why it's been so challenging and so 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 powerful. Somebody, I saw somebody say, this has been long. This has been a long process. It's been a long process to your happiness. It's been a long process to your to your yeah. uh, to, to your breakthrough. It's been a long process. But I've come to tell you today, just like he did it for Rachel, just like he did it for Hannah. Let me tell you something. You know, David says in Psalm 23, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And let me give you a let me give you an indication that God is getting ready to remember you. One of the indicators, prime indicators that God is getting ready to remember you is that you're sitting at a table and your enemies are watching. And so there are enemies. Don't get upset when people begin to, to turn their back on you and walk away and talk about you real bad. No, 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 no. They're just preparing a table before you and so, so that God can bless you in the presence of your enemy. He, he literally anointed David's head with oil. David wasn't writing Psalms 23 because he had heard about this experience. No. He had experienced it. He understood what it was like to fight Goliath when the entire army of the Philistines was watching. He understood what it was like to be able to watch as the sheep were watching when the lion and the bear were coming against him and the lion cub and the bear cub and all the other animals in the jungle were watching as he was getting ready to have to fight this fight. Come on. But God yes. is able to cause you to triumph in every situation. He's yes. there to cause you to be victorious in every circumstance. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you, I don't know who you are today that believes that God God has forsaken you, forgotten about you. You've been in your trial so long. You've been barren so long. You've gone through challenges so long that you're like, my God, can God remember me? Can God, re you're like my favorite chef. Can God remember such a dead dog as me? You begin to look at yourself bad because of all that you've been through. But I've come to tell you today that God is literally getting ready to remember you and your life is getting ready to be changed and you're getting ready to prosper and be in good health and increase and abound and expand and overflow like never before. That's the prophetic declaration for you today. God is getting ready to suddenly remember you. Amen. The Woo! stuff that I read was from God. page 40 from 39. Well, that's chapter 5. It starts on 38 and, and it ends It ends on page 45 of sudden breakthrough. And I'm telling you God is getting ready to remember you. I don't know who you are. I don't know who this word was for but I felt it in my spirit. There are some messages that are stronger for me than other messages and I believe that this is one of them that yes. God is literally about to remember many of you and getting ready to literally snatch you out of your situation. Are you listening to Jesus. me? You better get ready. You better put your seatbelt on because you're getting ready to have sudden acceleration, sudden increase, sudden overflow, sudden expansion. Those are getting ready to be your portion. No Amen. weapon formed against your promise and the things that God told you are going to prosper. I'm telling you, you've been. it's been tough, it's been long, but God is getting ready to remember you. Amen. Jesus. My okay. God. My God. God is an amazing, amazing, amazing God. We stand with you on this afternoon. We stand in faith. We stand on the promises of God for what you're believing God for. We're here to encourage you. We're here to strengthen you. We're here to see, to make sure that God's word come to pass in your life for you, your family, your business, your ministry, whatever you're believing God for. We want your faith to go to the next level so you can receive the next level. Glory to God. We want you to begin to look even at your own life. God, we're is it in me? In some areas in my life that I've fallen short, that I've, I've, I've not obeyed you in some areas. And so this is the time even now to, to allow God to invade those areas in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he can, he can do what only he can do. We can lay aside, we have to lay aside every weight and sin that was so easily, easily, easily beset us so that we can run the race that is before us. Come on. There is a prize. There is a prize. Hallelujah. And so that's why it's important that we press. David said, I would have fainted had I not believed in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so while you are alive, you're going to see the goodness of the Lord. It's not just going to be for your children and children's children. No, you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, God is faithful. My God, his word is sure. His word does not change. It will not change. It cannot change. 
heaven and earth may pass away, but his word will stand forever and forever and forever. And so I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how long it's been. The word of God will stand forever in the name of Jesus. He is your redeemer. He's the one that rescues you. He's the one that re redeems you from, from sickness and poverty and spiritual death. He's the one, hallelujah, that sets you up, glory to God, and places you. Glory to God in new places. Come on, in new places. I just hear that new places. God said, I'm bringing you into new places. Oh, glory to God, even on this morning when I was getting ready this morning. I just begin to hear God say there is a the the, the water is it, it's not just it God is saying this is a time of overflow that not God is not just gonna fill you no but you're gonna overflow in the name of Jesus you're not gonna have just enough or barely enough no this is a season of overflow and that's why you've been going through what you're going through for the length of time that you've been going through because it's not just about you what God is doing glory to God in and through your life it's gonna it's gonna catapult you but it's gonna also be a blessing to others you're, you're about to save some other people. You're about to deliver some other people. You're about to be able to bless some other people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The business, hallelujah, that you've been fighting and fighting and, and contending with. My God is not just going to bless your household, but because God has given you a kingdom mandate. He's given you a He's given you a global voice in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so you know the enemy doesn't want people to be set free, but God is freeing you today so that you can free other people in Jesus' name. That's it, man. Listen, yes. I'm not, we're not talking about this thing. We've yes. heard about it. No, we've seen God do it. Somebody Glory just sent me God. an inbox of the fact that they just they just moved into their one-bedroom uh, apartment. They had been homeless. I'm, I don't know how long they had been homeless, mm -hmm. but we prophesied and prayed over them and declared that God was literally getting ready to break through for them. Yes. And they, they, listen, they, they, they're in their apartment, so you might as well give a release, a sound of victory. Jesus. You might as well shout now because the victory is yours. We're believing God that God has remembered you like he did Rachel, like he did the mm -hmm. children of Israel. There is an anointing on this message. I'm telling you that you need to get ready to prepare to receive. Come on. And so Jesus. I'm telling you, I believe that God is getting ready to literally do something cataclysmic in your lives. If you have not gotten, uh, if you've not gotten this book, I'm telling you, it's going to bless you. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to just sell something. No, I'm trying to get you to your next level of destiny, purpose, your next breakthrough, your next place of increase. It's, it's called sudden breakthrough. And I yes. believe that it's your sudden season. And for those of you that are coming, that have already registered Premier, you're going to get this in there. For the first 10, after the other day that registered for the, the it's luncheon. It's already been signed. It's already, yes, it's already coming out. And then, then this, this meeting that's coming up this Thursday morning, my wife's going to start out with intercession because I believe that everything starts with intercession. Amen. And so I'm looking at this. I'm looking at Apostle John, Apostle Andrew, uh, Prophetess Sophia, uh, Jenny Weaver, Enrique Holmes, Apostle Andy, and Apostle Samuel. I believe that this meeting is literally going to be cataclysmic, that the worship that's going to go forth, amen, that the prophetic declaration that goes forth, the deliverance that goes forth, the personal prophetic ministry that goes forth, come on, I believe that all of those things, the marketplace luncheon, come on, the uh, the, the ministry luncheon, come on, I believe that these things are getting ready to release for you uh, one of the most profound releases that you have ever seen, and listen, I believe that the message that God, I know that God has, since many of you love us, and you said, man, man, God, you've really ministered some powerful message, but I believe the message that I'm going to minister Thursday night is going to be the most powerful message that I've ever I've ever ministered because I feel it in a different way yes. and I feel like I've tapped into a vein in the spirit realm mm -hmm. that I've not tapped into before I am stirred in a way that I've not been stirred before and so Jesus. if you if I were you I would find a way there's one young lady that inboxed us today and she said listen she said I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to get there she said if I gotta rent a car she said I'm gonna get there I'm not letting anything stop me from getting there and I'm yes. telling you I believe in God and I'm trusting God for supernatural breakthrough in the lives of his people that are supposed to be there I bind the, the hand of every enemy and every assignment from hell that has tried to stop people from getting into that place because I believe there's a glory. The, the devil, the God would never stop you from getting into the glory. It's always the devil that wants to stop you from getting into the glory because he understands that if you get into the glory, if you press into that place, it's always the devil that's distracting you. It's always the enemy that's sending things and people and places and things to distract you when you're trying to get into the presence of God. And so when you find people, places and things that try to get you out of the presence of God, it's not God. I'm telling 
telling you it is not God, it is the enemy. So any voice that's telling you that you can you can miss this, you can miss that, you don't have to do this, you don't have to, imagine what those people felt like who who missed the upper room. Those 120 that pressed their way. I don't know what how hard it was for them to get there, but what I I don't know how long they had been there. I don't know how long they had to stay there. I don't know, I don't know what the, the full circumstance because yes. I wasn't there. But I know that there were people who missed that moment with them that were like, my God, I, I missed my moment. And so I'm telling you, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know where you're watching me from. But I'm telling you, I don't want you to miss your moment. I'm not saying it because I saw our meeting. I believe that there was a divine stamp from heaven upon everything that we've done that pertained to suddenly, whether it was a book, whether it was a meeting, whether it was a prayer oil, whether it was an anointed t-shirt, whatever it was, I believe that God is literally yes. on this. And my gift, one of our gifts, my gift is the gift of, of gift of faith. My wife's gifts is the gift of exhortation. And so when we put the gift of faith together with the gift of exhortation, you have what's called a Molotov cocktail. It's going to be explosive <laughs> because revelation and faith, when it comes together with yes. exhortation and encouragement and strengthening, I'm telling you, if you've got to get in your car and drive six hours, you better be here <laughs> because I believe there is a presence of God that's literally getting ready to descend upon this yes. place and God's going to remember God. every promise that he promised me that he would do for people when we had meetings. This is not just for other people, but I believe I'm receiving this word for me. God, you promised me that we would have meetings and literally revival would break out. And I'm telling you, I believe that God's getting ready to do that. That revival is getting ready to break out and not just a temporary revival, but sustained revival. Sustain. God, the sustained sustain. revival in the lives of your people that will literally cause everything in their life to be revolutionized. That your power would hit you. That your anointing would hit them. That your favor would hit them. That your grace would hit them. With your strength would hit them. God, that, that your open doors would hit them. That, that favor would clothe them like a blanket and become a magnet, God, for everything that belongs to them. That the earth would begin to call things up that belong to them. I'm believing God and I'm getting stirred. I'm telling you over the next three to four days, I'm, I've turned my consecration up to another dimension, another level. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to hear from nobody. Jeez. I don't want, I don't want, I don't need, I don't need nothing to eat. God, I don't want anything to drink. All I want to do is stay with you and be in your presence because I want to see you do something in my generation. And I want to oh see you do God. something in this meeting. Yes. I don't want to just have another meeting to have another meeting. No. I want every speaker and I want every psalmist and I want every musician to release a sound from heaven that causes people's lives to be revolutionized by the power of the glory of Jesus Christ. Literally, I want angels to ascend and descend in that place. I want the power of God to be demonstrated. I want blind eyes to see. I want deaf ears to hear. I want mute tongues to be unmuted. I want lame legs to gain strength. Come on. I want to see supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles begin to take place on the, in the lives of God's people. I'm not satisfied with just another lukewarm meeting. I'm not just satisfied with another good singing. I'm not good just satisfied. No, I want the people that are coming, these prophets and these, these intercessors, I want uh, these prophets. That's why I've got prophets that are, that are lawyers that are coming. Come on. Uh, you know, when I, when I hear Michelle J. Miller, she's not just an attorney who's going to help you understand how to burp your brain. No, I got prophets on that panel. I got people that hear from God so that they can hear from God. And as you are sitting there, you get a multi-million dollar idea birthed in the midst of the session. Are you listening to me? Jesus. And then you get the instruction and you get the wisdom. And then God literally causes somebody to write a check for you that it happened to me. And if it happened to me, God will do it for you. And so I'm telling you, I want to see people in the presence of God so that things can be birthed. Come on, sacrifice. You sacrifice for everything else. You've given to everything else. Now it's time to sacrifice for you. It's time for you to sacrifice for your breakthrough. It's yes. time for you to move into the next dimension of who God called you to be. I'm telling you, I feel the presence of God on this thing. I'm believing God and I'm trusting God that not one person that presses and pushes their way will not receive the blessing of the Lord. Last year, I told the testimony, there was a lady who came and all she had was a ring. She took this ring off of her finger at the conference and she put it in the offering bucket. We saw it in the offering bucket and the, and the, and the, and the, and the people said, well, you know, somebody lost their ring and she came up front and she said, I didn't lose my ring, man of God. She said, that was all I had to give. And I'm telling you, and when I told people, they had already released. And I, I got on the microphone, I said, there was a woman of God who all she had left was a ring to give. And she came and listen, people from all over the building came and began to sow into her. So I'm telling you that there is a place, there is a time, there is a circumstance when miracles begin to happen for the people of God. You've got to know that you know that you know that you know that the God 
God that we serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think according to the power that is working. And we're trusting God. We're believing God. And we know that God is about to remember you. If I were you, I'd write it down in my journal that this day it was prophesied to me that God was going to remember me. Yes. And then I would war and I would wage a good warfare for the prophetic promises because I believe Jesus. that when God says something and when God releases something and God speaks something, according to 2 Chronicles 20 and 20, that if you believe in him, you'll be established. But if you believe in his prophets, you'll prosper. Absolutely. And I believe this is the time for you to prosper at the hearing of the prophetic word from the prophetic voice that God is speaking to you through. I believe that it's your season. I believe it's your time. I believe it's your time for breakthrough. You've just got to begin to release a sound that causes God to remember. Jesus. Come on, like the children of Israel. Yes. Cry out to them that, that he would remember the ancestors that have prayed for you, that have prophesied over you, that have said, my grandchildren's children will be blessed. Come on. They prophesied that. They yes. spoke that into the atmosphere. Yes. They had covenant with God. God. Your great grandmother sowed a seed one day in a service, and that seed was for her, was for her grandchildren. That seed was for her great grandchildren. That seed was for her great grandchildren's grandchildren. I'm telling you that just the seed that you didn't even sow is getting ready to come up in your situation. God is literally getting ready to remember you. You might as well put your hand to the plow and believe God and trust God and get into a quiet place for the next three days because I'm telling you within three days, come on, within the next 72 hours, God is literally ready to cause things to happen for you that you've been praying for and believing God and trusting for. I'm telling you, you're 71 and a half hours away from your next breakthrough. Come on, somebody is 23 and a half hours away from your next breakthrough. Somebody is six days, come on, 59, uh, 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 20, 23 hours and 59 minutes away from your next breakthrough. You better believe God and trust God and cancel out doubt. Everything that makes you doubt God and not believe that he can bring things Jesus. to pass, you're going to cancel it out in this season. I'm telling you, the glory of God is getting ready to descend upon you. The place where you are is literally the uh, angels are getting ready to rip the roof off and literally begin to ascend and descend in that place. I'm telling you, I feel the presence of God. Jesus. And I'm trusting him. Ooh, my God. I'm trusting him. Uh, I'm trusting him. God. I don't know who you are, but Jesus. I'm telling you, I believe there's a glory. Jesus. As you read the Jesus. words of this book, Jesus. those of you Jesus. who have already purchased it, I'm not just telling books. I'm telling you, I'm trying to get you into the next level of your destiny. And I'm telling you, $15 is nothing to pay to raise your faith level to a place that you can believe God for your next breakthrough. Are you listening? I don't know who I'm talking to today. Yes. I don't know whose ideologies and thought processes the Lord is sending me to destroy and to break every demonic system and every cycle and every thought process that's contrary to your breakthrough. But I'm believing God that God is literally getting ready to cause you to literally be catapulted into your next dimension mm -hmm. and into the next place of your destiny. Yes. I bind the enemy and the, the enemy of your soul which has come against you. Jesus. Come on, you let the thing get into your mind. We've been talking about being a masterpiece and being unique and you let it get into your mind that you are not who God says you are. But I'm telling you, I'm believing that God it, that you're going to realize that God is who he says he is in your situation and God is literally getting ready to remember you. He's getting ready to literally catapult you into your next dimension. He's getting ready to cause you to receive the manifestation of every prophetic promise that he's ever promised you, that he promised your mama, he promised your daddy, he promised your grandmother, yes. he promised your great-grandmother, your great-grandfather, your grandfather, that he promised your great-great-great-great-great-grandfather, grandmother, all the Jeez. way down a hundred years back. Every prophetic promise, everything they didn't Jeez. receive, you get ready to, listen, they're getting ready to bring the truck and they're going to load the pallet up with money and they're going to load the pallet up with promises and they're going to literally take it off on a forklift off of the back of the U-Haul truck, off of the back of the 18-wheeler. Come on, you, you're going to need an 18-wheeler to bring all the promises that God has for you. All of the all of the blessings, all of the favor, all of the increase, everything God said is literally getting ready to pull up in front of your house. Come on, there's an 18-wheeler with promises and blessings that have been stored up for years. Come on, there's treasury deposits that belong to you. There's things that's in your names that's been held up, but God is getting ready to open up the heavens and remember you and release everything to you. I hear the sound of the forklift backing up. I hear the beeping sound of the, of the forklift backing up and literally coming off of the truck, off of the 18-wheeler. That's literally coming down your street. That's literally taking pallets off of the truck to literally pull them into your, into your driveway. To literally pull them into your garage. To literally pull them into your bank account. I'm telling you that the promises of God are yea and amen. I'm telling you every yes. prophetic promise and every declaration that he yes. gave is getting ready to come to pass and you're getting ready to experience the glory of God like My never God. before in Jesus, Jesus name. Jesus name. My God.
Hallelujah. It's coming. Hallelujah. It's coming. Hallelujah. It's coming. Yes. Listen, if you if you already, already registered, already listen, already if you've already registered, registered, make sure you invite somebody else. Because I promise you, I give you a money back guarantee that God is going to meet you in a way, in a tangible way in your life like never before. I'm telling you, I feel it. I feel it. I'm telling you, I feel it. I feel the presence of God. I feel the, the earth quaking. I feel the atmosphere quaking. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain getting ready to come for you. I hear the sound of bones beginning to come back together. I hear the sound, come on, of the cries of the people of God. I hear the sound of the suddenly coming for you. I hear the sound of sudden earthquakes. Come on, Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail. I hear the sound of the shackles breaking. Come on. I hear you, Peter. I hear the, the, the shackles when the angel comes and loose you. I hear the shackles and the chains falling to the ground. Come on, Peter. I hear the sound of your sandals walking out of that jail. Come on. I hear the sound of the saints praying. I hear the sound of Rhoda. And I hear the sound of you knocking on the door. I'm telling you, I hear the sound. My God, my God, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, Jesus, glory to your name, Father, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, come on and just begin to honor him, begin to adore him, begin to let him know how much you value and appreciate him, hallelujah, thank him for not giving up on you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Jesus is king. God is exalted. We worship you. God is exalted. Exalt him. Come on, we worship you. Come on, right there where you're at. Just begin to lift up your sound to him. Begin to lift up your sound. Don't go anywhere. This is not the time to leave. Sometimes people start leaving the, the broadcast, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't leave until the end. I believe that God, even as we lift up our corporate sound, that we begin to worship him and magnify him and begin to praise him and worship him and intercede to him together, that literally we can literally cause a cry to come up into the earth realm from every place that we are that comes up from the earth and literally ascends into heaven and causes God to get God's attention, that God hears the purity of our hearts. He hears the sincerity of our hearts. He hears the repentant heart. He hears Here's the heart uh, that, 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 that's been broken, that's been torn, that's been that's been tried, that's been, you've gone through every storm that somebody could go through. If people only knew your testimony, if they only knew all that you've been through. But I tell you that God today is getting ready to cause his word to be remembered concerning you. Yes. That's our declaration. Hallelujah. That's our declaration. God. Well, listen, we've been up here longer than we usually are, <laughs> but we love you, we bless you, we declare yes. that God is remembering you. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to cause his good his good treasure from the heavens yes. to be released unto you. Stand with us for these next 72 hours. Stand with us in prayer. Cut off the phone. Cut off this. Only do the stuff that's necessary and mandatory for you to do. But get with God. Every prayer petition, every everything that you've been asking God for, get with him. Let's get with him these next 72 hours. Yes. And let's believe God that no person that walks into that place, that it would not be like any other meeting they've ever been in in their life. That the experience that they have and the glory realm, that all of the hell we've had to pay Jesus. to get to this point, that God Jesus. literally causes our wounds to open, Jesus. our, our my waters God. to assuage. My God. Come on, our enemies to be confounded and confused. Jesus. Our enemies to be ashamed. Come on, Jesus. he's prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Presence. Come on, he's getting ready to anoint your head with oil, mm. and your cup is getting ready to overflow. Mm. This is your season yes. of overflow. Jesus. It's your season of increase. Get ready for God to do a new thing in your life. Amen. Well, we love you. Yes. Go to our website. You can get this book now. And uh, I really believe it'll bless you. Sudden Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I believe this one, man, listen. Just the, 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 the catalyst for breakthrough and destroying the enemies of your breakthrough are huge. Mm -hmm. uh, a few year, few months, about, about eight, nine months ago, we were supposed to give away a free chapter called Destroying the Enemies of our suddenly season and breakthrough and um, we weren't able to do it because we've entered into a deal but that that chapter is here mm -hmm. and I believe it's gonna I believe it's gonna bless your life to break the systems and the cycles that have tried to hinder you and stop you listen I, I don't even want to get off of here today <laughs> but I know we gotta go yeah. but I'm believing God for breakthrough I'm believing God for just amazing things to happen in your life you deserve it come on you've mm -hmm. you've you wrestled long enough you know what it's like to be without but now it's time for you to know what it is to be with. Come yes. on. You know what it's like to yes. be frustrated. 
But God's getting ready to send people into your life that will cause you not to be frustrated any yes. longer. So get ready for God to do amazing things. We love you. We're getting out of here. Go to the website now, www.lejeanandvalor.com, and get registered. Get here. As if you got to get here by train, plane, <laughs> automobile. But whatever you got to do, get here. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, we love Amen. you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll come back again soon. God Amen. Bless.